Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. It's not cold. <laughs> and that is an invitation for a slightly longer channel. <laughs> if you're just tuning in to this channel, as many will be, this is the eighth message in the beautiful, majestic island nation of Iceland. We are touring with two busloads of tourists. And the reason it isn't cold is because synchronistically they find themselves in a church. It was not planned this way, dear ones. And I want to tell you some of the synchronicity that went into sitting here. But before we do that, we wish to honor the building, the builders, the faith that is here. We wish to honor why this structure was built. You sit in a structure completely built for one purpose, that is to help those looking for faith. You sit in a structure that undoubtedly has had lives saved, people healed, where solace and peace is found in their own way. Dear ones, I want you to think for a moment out of the box of any belief system you might have and instead think for a moment of the compassion that is here of those who have gone through the schools and spent their lives dedicated so they can be here with others perhaps all their lives this is a divine place we thank those who would allow you to come in out of the cold The church was shut down and closed. It was closed because of the current virus which is here on the planet. I want to think for a moment of the one who answered the door. When someone said we have two busloads of tourists from 16 countries. And we come in. And the answer was yes. That's a compassionate answer. And that is what they do here. Built for those to sit in the same chairs you're sitting in. To honor that which is the faith in the master of love. It doesn't get much better than that. And it is an example so much of that which we teach you daily and the light workers we talk about. In order to explain to those listening how you got here and the synchronicity of this place right now, I would like to explain a little story. We're going to call it the saga of bus one. <laughs> On this, the eighth day of the journey, the bus is left as normal after a nice breakfast in a hotel. A breakfast, by the way, that had to be served to you at at least three meters apart. <laughs> An unusual kind of time it is. Loading the buses was normal and off they went. The plan was to make certain that you would beat the weather which was starting to close in 
Now, in this winter place, the weather can be startlingly brutal. And it comes and it goes quickly. And so the buses left right on time. When they got almost to the height of the pass where much of the snow would be, one of the buses failed. It happens, dear ones. And it was stuck. Both buses had to remain still, waiting then for a mechanics to come from the nearest city. In the process, the weather got worse. In the process, you could see the snow building up, the wind increasing. And after approximately an hour to an hour and a half, the repairmen arrived. The bus was then fixed, and it was on its way. Except, on its way to what? And the answer was an impasse in the roads due to the weather and the buildup of snow. No one was going. The next question was, how do you turn around a big bus on a small road? And the answer is, you really don't. You have to find some way to do it. At that moment of discussion of how to turn around, synchronistically, a snowplow appeared. <laughs> what a kawinky dinky <clears throat> And the snowplow was asked, how bad is it ahead? And the answer was, impassable. You cannot go. However, if I turn around the snowplow, I can plow the way for you. <laughs> what a coincidence. And so it did. And so now you are very late for a proposed lunch, which may or may not happen today. <laughs> And then, coming over the pass, clear weather, all is well, the bus <laughs> fails again. It happens. And so within walking distance of the bus, while it is standing waiting for decisions on what to do next, you spot a church in the distance. The church was just closed for the virus. You know the rest of the story. And here you sit. Dear ones, this is synchronicity at its best. Not only did you make it over the pass, even though a bus broke, but you find yourself in a sacred place that was built for what you're doing. What a coincidence. This is the absolute definition of controlling your own reality. There are two ways to think about these things in this tour group or for anyone listening. One would say, why did it break down and spoil the day? Why do we have to do other things from what we planned? I have my swimming suit ready to go. <laughs> we were going to do a spa day. And instead, we're in a church. How horrible can that be? And then the others would say, I'm here for the experience. And so far, it hasn't been that bad. And we find ourselves warm, appreciating this place, thanking those who built it, and perhaps even feeling the energy of those who sat in the chairs before you and the healings that might have occurred. Those who have found solace in the messages that are presented here. Those who find themselves wanting to be here week after week for the peace of that which is taught in this room. That's worth sitting, is it not? And pondering the human condition where fear can be eliminated with love. 
We've studied the various letters of the word Iceland. And today we come to D. Now for this group, you already know what that means. It means don't drive the bus today. <laughs> you might say, well, it has, to, it has to stand for divinity. Absolutely, because this is the message of Cryon. That's what goes on in this room. But we're going to surprise you. For the letters stand for the lesson of the day. No more, no less. They stand in a way that changes, perhaps, if they were defined tomorrow. So they're always in the moment, just like this channel. We're going to make the D today represent a word. A word that actually has many meanings, many meanings. And the word is diamond. I want you to start examining all of the attributes of the meaning and the metaphors of diamond. The first, diamonds are some of the hardest geological substances in existence from the ground. They were hardened over thousands or more years, sometimes millions, and converted under pressure to this stone that is the diamond. It is used in industry, for it is the hardest substance and can cut through even those other substances which would seem to be very hard. So the first attributes of the diamond is strength, absolute strength, some of the hardest, most profound strength on the planet. Isn't it also interesting that when you polish that strength and you present it as a stone in its beauty, it is then one of the most beautiful stones on the planet. Stone cutters know the faceting very carefully to make it sparkle to the max. And what has it then become? It is then a metaphor of beauty. Beyond that, worldwide, it becomes a metaphor of love. For the diamond is what is given between couples to show the love that they have for one another, and it's traditional. It's interesting, isn't it? You can go from something that was under pressure for so many millions, thousands of years, that it's as hard as anything, and then it becomes something that you would wear as jewelry to show your love for another human being. All of you in this group went to a very special place a few days ago called Diamond Beach. Now on that beach, there are no diamonds. So why call it Diamond Beach? The metaphor is this. During the winter time, small icebergs, some the size of human beings, some slightly larger, break apart and deposit themselves on that beach, sometimes by the thousands. They are clear, crystal clear. And as you walk among them with a sun that is shining upon them, they all glisten like diamonds. There's nothing quite like that on the planet, dear ones. Now here is an interesting thing you should ponder. When you see these and the sun is shining as it was for you, you see a reflection, a glimmer. And as you look upon the beach, it's everywhere. Almost like tiny little angelic lights everywhere in the facets of the ice. If you photograph them and look at your photos, you'll say, where are all those glimmers? 
those glimmers are almost too bright to be photographed. And on photographs and videos, it's flat. But to the human eye, it comes alive. There are certain things that cannot be yet captured on film or digital or any other media which is like that. And that's one of them. You might say you were in a magic place. Now, let's study for a moment what that is and what it means. The beach is named after the stone, but it only is water. So let's study now the metaphor of the water in combination with the diamond. Water is very special on this planet, and it has one attribute that is very special. It's easily converted into three states. One is liquid. One is a, f a solid, and the other is a gas. You might say, in honor of this room, it's much like the three-in-one. <laughs> some of you will understand that, some of you will not. Three-in-one. It can be many states. Think of this. As solid as you are, liquid to flow where it wants to go, and gas, which is, well, almost invisible, like steam, which is what it is. Why am I saying these things? Because the word diamond represents all of that, all of that. What is the metaphor here? I will tell you from my standpoint as cryon, looking at you, what the metaphor is. Your soul glistens like the diamond. It, is, it has been baked for eons under pressure. So many places that you have no idea it's been to bring it to this place called Earth at this time. It is so strong that it can cut through anything. It is built for these kinds of things, your soul, it is. It glistens like the sun. It is like a piece of jewelry on the planet. It is so beautiful. And at the core, it represents love. That is the creative source. In this room, they may even use the words, made in his image, all of you. Let me explain what that means. You are not made in the image of God, or all of you would be invisible. <laughs> The image in that scripture refers to love. You have been created in the image of God, which is love. All of you, every soul here, has that potential, that beauty, that love. In addition, you can change to be compassionate. You can change to be industrious. You can be in the middle of any situation and be fluid. You can help people no matter what is happening. You can be their solace. You can be their teacher. You can simply be their listener. You can be their diamond on the beach, something they can't see with a camera, but they can feel it in their hearts. That's the diamond. That's what you look like to spirit. That's who you are. The more mature the human race becomes, the more diamond-like it becomes. And pretty soon you will see the attribute of appreciation and love starting to be given to one another, like you give a ring. But instead, it's an emotion. Here, have my diamond to you, because I am in love with humanity. You might go into a group which is wringing its hands with fear and asking, what are they going to do next, and why is this happening? And one person can make a difference. My partner received an email earlier this day from another country. And the email went like this. 
Lee, what are we supposed to do with what is happening today? It's such an enormous lie. Now let's stop right there. Here was a human being consumed with a political potential. What they had heard, what they believe, it doesn't matter. They were consumed with that which was anger because they believed something was happening beyond the virus, which was horrible. And the answer is, what do we do? Do we tell this truth to the people? And my partner wrote back. And here were my words to him. Light workers are not political. We're not. You're not. It is not up to us to reveal that which is a lie or go and march into the streets or correct wrongs. The journey of the soul at this point in the maturity says that what you're here for is to be compassionate to those who are afraid of whatever lie or whatever disease or whatever political thing they're afraid of. To be there as soulless and compassionate and help them through their fear. Like a lighthouse on the rock, that is the duty. It's different from what you may think. It's not evangelistic. It doesn't then push that on other people to learn something perhaps they didn't want to learn. And instead, you sit there like the masters you read about, silent, loving, peaceful, and people start to relax and realize you are a healer, a healer of emotions, a healer of fear, and we need you this time, right now, and these next months. Oh, that's the diamond I see, the one that you are. And so it is.